Uh, yeah, hey there, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of uh, Crime Page by Bonnie Does. Today, I was coming through from about, I don't know, 12,000 feet up a freaking volcano uh, just east of Mexico City. We're on a Popocatépetl. Popocatépetl volcano over there. You can see what we're looking at. We just stopped on our side of the road to take a leak. Got a lot of nice, extrusive igneous rocks. Fancy words for uh, rocks that are just belched out of a volcano. Uh, you can see right there, it looks like we got uh, kind of a mixture of, well, right there you got some, looks like some pumice. And uh, right above it, looks like you got uh, kind of a mixture of rhyolite and basalt. Up there you got Pinus hartwegii, high elevation pine here in Mexico. And over here, we got a pretty cool plant. Oh, another weird bastard, weirdbastards.com. All right, uh, weirdbeautifulbastards.com. Crunchy, crunchy uh, substrate right here. This is a member of the carrot family. Uh, known as Eryngium. This is Eryngium uh, protea flora. Okay, I guess because that uh, flowers kind of look like a protea. You know, the southern hemisphere, uh, one of the southern hemisphere flowering plants that's used commonly in boutiques, uh, you know, for the, the uh, bouquets and with the shit. But uh, so somebody saw this and thought it looked like a protea. It kind of does, I'll give them that, you know. But uh, it, it is a carrot. It's APACA is the family here. It's got the Ferrano coumarin secondary chemistry. You got a, a Globose umbo. Those are a bunch of tiny little flowers grouped together in a, you know, kind of like a cone. Okay, with all these goddamn uh, flies. Are they shit flies? Are they shit flies? You know, always like the, the cartoon flies in Oakland. They come into your house and they're kind of harmless. I don't think they go for the shit, but they used to just fly around my uh, living room in kind of like a square. Oh, I just scared them. Sorry, guys in a square pattern you know they weren't the shit flies they were the cartoon flies kind of like the flies that linus has on him you know from the peanuts cartoons anyway as you can see uh this is a very spiny plant built for defense eryngium has got to be a long uh you know it's got to be probably its own branch in the carrot family phylogeny there's eryngiums uh, everywhere you got quite a few in south america you got some in texas eryngium leavenworthii is a showy bastard you see in texas but uh, this one, you know, is a fucking beast. They can get a lot taller than that. Some of them get six feet wide, six feet tall. And uh, up there you got some pencils. You got all kinds of good shit. Let's go check it out. Dominant species of lupin at this altitude. You know, I uh, haven't gotten hypoxia yet, you know, from uh, when you don't get enough oxygen because you're so high up. Because you're so high. Look at that beautiful indigo on that lupin. Looks like uh, lupinus montanus. You got your palmate leaves kind of folded, conduplicating with the shit. Got your banner wings and keel. Flower morphology. See that? The banner is that posterior petal, and you got the two wings. Uh, which are enclosing the keel, and inside the keel uh, are those 10 stamens. And just look at one, before they come out, you got the bracts subtending each one. These can get very big. I've seen them upwards of six feet, this species. And you got all this grass as a species of Mullenbergia. It's a species of bunch grass. Oh, yeah, look at that. We got a tiny facilia over there. See that guy? A barrage. A tiny one with those beautiful blue anthers. What are you doing over there? Look at this guy, holy shit. What a damn, what a damn fancy bastard. God, these goddamn forests are so magnificent. Anyway, here's a, here's a species of penstemon, quite common. Looks like penstemon gentianoides. Cause I guess somebody thought it looked like a gentian. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Get up and look at those anthers over there. See, look, they're spilling out, see that? You got four stamens, four anthers. Oh, there's a fly in there. The corolla's got, got a little bit of hair on it, see that? And the leaves are just uh, quite linear, with that mid vein being somewhat uh, of a lighter tone of green. 
than the rest. And of course, some of those, some of that foliage, very glabrous, opposite leaves. Some of that foliage has a beautiful mahogany tint to it. All right, kind of like a hematoma or something. You know, if you got smacked on your fanny too hard or some shit, maybe you get hit in the thigh. You know, with a baseball bat. I don't know why I'm. I always talk about that. And look at this goddamn grass. Look at that mully. Is it a mully? Is it a Mullenbergia? Oh, fuck. That's in Look at that. Oh. Get at a look at that Oringo. It's so mean. So mean. But it still wouldn't hurt to have it in your garden. Let's take a close-up look at that inflorescence. There you go. You can see what we got going on. Bunch of tiny flowers. Three or four hundred tiny purple flowers. Almost like a, an Asteraceae capitulum. But it's a carrot. APAC. Oh, then we got a clover too, a trifolium. You ever look close at a clover flower and realize it's just a goddamn pea? It's a resupinate pea flower, so it's flipped kind of upside down. Looks kind of vaginate. Banner, banner petal in the back, two wings, you know, looking like a labia. Can you say labia on a Utah? I don't know if you could say that, but I'm not being obscene. I'm just using scientific terminology here. And then that keel in the middle. And it's a bunch of flo bunch of flowers like that, just pea flowers clumped together. It's a species of trifolium, just growing a prostrate on the ground on the edge of this uh, sketchy cliff right here. And then there's here's that the crassulaceous bastard right there, full frontal, looks like a sedum, could be a veladia. I did not look at the character break in the key, so I don't know. Could be talking out my ass. I mean, I know it's one of those genera, but uh. Regardless, look at that. Look at those flowers. Oh, how many stamens you got in there? Ten, five petals, ten stamens, five carpels. Those little pink things. Those are the. Well, let me let me see if I can get up there and get a more stable shed. Yeah, there you go. See that the uh, gynoecium has five parts to it. Those little pink things might have more than ten stamens. I don't know, but five petals. Either way, you got the succulent leaves. Quite a few sedums and other members of the Crassulaceae. At the high altitude. Look at that piece of orange pumice. What the shit? Oh, I am losing my breath a little bit. Looks like you got a real Donna up there. Remember the uh, Senecio tribe. And all the uh, the little, what are they called? The pussy toes? That uh, uh, nephalioid bastard. What is it? I forget. I see it so much. I don't really care for it too much. But, uh, you know, I, I'll give it honorable mention. There you go. And then growing in the little cracks, you got uh, two different species of fern. You got some liverworts back there. Look at this fancy bastard. Look at that. Looks uh, teridaceous, teridaceae being the family. Flip it over, and you, look at it. Uh, tell me that it's not real nice. Look at it. You see that? Oh, that's beautiful. If I could just hold the goddamn camera still. But, you know, it. In this, with not enough light, and, and it's close. You, well, there you go. There's a little bit. And anyway, look at it. It almost looks like it could be in our Gyra Cosma. All right, and you got that kind of stiff rachis right there, the stiff black rachis. Stiffblackrachis.com. I'm going to go with Teradace. Look at dainty little bastard. They're growing up here at 12,000 feet on a fucking volcano. How about that? And then there's that facilia just forming a nice little mat with those blue anthers. Look at this. Holy shit. Fancybastard.com. God, look at it. And like a beacon in the night, like a flame in the night, we got a dwarf paintbrush, a dwarf castilea. Orobank Casey is the family there. A hemiparasite, probably on a grass. Okay, so castilea flower morphology. We got the bracts. Okay, and then we got, this is actually the calyx, that whole red thing. Those are the sepals, and then the corollas in there. They could be really confusing. And then the stamens, you can't see it, but they're in that little hood. Little cuculate hood. So you have to dissect that whole thing. But look at how fuzzy that is. Again, probably an adaptation to this high altitude. You got fuzz on this corolla, this fucking ketchup and mustard bastard. Look at that. Dwarf, because we are high up. Probably parasitizing the grass. Okay. So borrowing some energy from the grass, but he can photosynthesize himself. And look at those magnificent bracts. Okay, look at it. Look at that, holy shit. What the fuck? Look at it. And then you got just that little style poking out. A little beaked, a little hooked style poking out with the stigma. See that? Anthers inside there. Okay, so we came down a mountain a little bit. Not too much. Still about 11,000 feet. Looks like we got a nice member of the genus Stevia. Eupatoria is the family. You can see those long-ass styles. Okay, see that little curly cue up top. Look at that, this thing. See the one on the left in the back right there is presenting pollen, still male, just came out of that fused anther column. And then that one that's in the shape of a Y uh, is already, uh, it's already presented pollen and it's waiting to be, uh, get posit uh, pollen deposited on it. You got the uh, opposite leaves. And uh, 
How does it smell? Pretty good. Important for the pond. Oh, everything is so green. Climate of the Pacific Northwest up here at about 11,000 feet. Got a species of fucking baccarus. Coyote brush. Okay. Get a lot of these in the New World, Southern and Northern Hemisphere. Seen them out of the Dominican Republic too at high elevations. Coyote bush. Got the waxy shit uh, on those leaves. That waxy cuticle. Smells very good. Lots of volatiles, all right? Anyone who's in the Bay Area, California, of course, will know coyote brush. You know, permeates the air on a cool bay night. And here we got a goddamn cucurbit. See, we got squashes, okay, cucurbitaceae are monoecious. So they got male flowers and female flowers on the same plant, but the flowers are unisexual. That's a male flower right there. See, there's no ovary subtending that flower. And here is a female flower. That's the ovary. The flower already fell off. Look, it's got a little, couple spikes on it, too. Chayote, a common uh, fruit. Okay, or vegetable, I guess you call it, a common vine down here, very delicious, uh, is in the same family. So that's that's the fruit maturing, and uh, you always have many more male flowers than female. It's only got four petals on there, but it does kind of look, almost, that, those are, that's a, look at that, so you got the pollen on the underside. Almost looks like a stigma, like it would be a female part, but the pollen's on the underside right there. See that yellow pollen? All the squashes do that. Look at a fucking pumpkin flower next time, you lazy jag. Why don't you, you know, give it a good rectal exam and teach yourself something new about cucurbitaceae. It's a, it's a very successful family all over the world. Okay, here we got a species of pseudonephalium, all right? Not going off yet. Paper daisy tribe, nephaliae. Smells kind of like curry, very glandular, okay? Got the trichomes in the glands. Like you got some bugs stuck up, up, up in there dying, you know? Why'd he do that? Why's he going to do that? But it, the smell is so pungent. A lot of the pseudonephalium smell very good. This one smells like curry. And then that same genus I showed you before, but here's a little little uh, diminutive bastard. Another oryngium. See that? Another carrot. Carrot family, APAC. And uh, there's the flowers. You can see just little, again, purple. A purple inflorescence composed of many flowers. You can see those purple anthers sticking out on the filaments. Uh, there's some... There's some that already got pollinator right there. Yeah, look at it. See that? So you got those white bracts mimicking petals, just acting as floral attractants. And then you got, oh, well, maybe that's too close. Maybe we got to back up a little bit. See, then you got, looks like those guys in the center already got pollinated. All right, this guy's still going off. Eryngium is such a cool genus. Wild ass carrots, man. And then you got the, remember the comalinaceae right there. All right. Same family as uh, Tradescantia, all right? Monocots with those, look at those big bracts right there. And here we go. We got to do a geology money shot or two. Look at that. Each layer, a different successive eruption from Popocatepetl, all right? Devastating eruptions. Would love to be here to see what it's like when I go off. Preferably in a spot where I wouldn't get covered in a pyroclastic flow. But, uh, you know, I'll take what I can get. That's fine. You know, depends on what point in my life I'm at. Look at that, though. All that volcanic ash. Different layers. Volcanic ash. Pumice. Somebody wrote Mr. Fab. Is that the rapper, Mr. Fab? The Bay Area hyphy rapper? Did he come down here? I don't think. Maybe he did. You ever seen that video where he's driving around in the Ghostbusters car? Anyway... Beautiful. I do love, you know, John McPhee said uh, road cuts are church to geologists, and this is no exception. This, I feel very sacred here, especially since Mr. Fab uh, wrote his name in the side of the uh, rock wall right there, the road cut. What causes the yellow color of that pumice up there? Maybe more sulfur? Who knows? And here with these uh, near almost pendant flowers, we got a species of uh, lithospermum. Baraginaceae is the family there. Yellow tube flowers. And you got the hairs on the leaves, of course, because it is Beraginaceae. A lot of them got those hispid hairs. Same family as Facelia and uh, Ariel Dictian. Look at it. Not much smell. Look at the calyx, too. See those long, long bracts? You got the hairs on the long bracts. And what the shit is going on with those anthers in there? Well, you got a guy in there right now. You got a couple guys in there. Alternating leaves. Quite a few, uh, quite a few cool species in this genus in Mexico. See these right here, these shrubs right here. This is another Senecio. Senecio is a huge goddamn genus. Okay, all over the world, some really cool ones in Chile, some real cool ones in South Africa. This is Senecio cinerarioides. You can see those leaves even without the flowers. 
Uh, pretty fancy, pretty fancy, pretty flashy. They got uh, they got the hairs. They got a lot of trichomes and with this shit on the top on that uh, ad axial surface. Flip it over in the ab axial surface right there. Look at it. So many goddamn hairs. They look white like a bunch of cobwebs. Feel kind of waxy too. Forms a large shrub right here, and uh, you often get Psilocybe astacorum growing beneath it. I guess they just maybe that species of Psilocybe is a saprotroph on a dead material from uh, this woody Senecio. Magnificent bastard up here at uh, 11,000 feet on the volcanoes around Mexico City. Plenty of epiphytes up here in this, uh, this here bosque. Looks like another species of Crassula. Maybe a Veladia. You got uh, this polypodium fern too. Look at that. Just growing growing epiphytically. The light's too low. You got tons of lichen species on that bark. Just very wet, green, verdant forest. Ah. You could, oh, there's a nice Crataegus rosaceae right there, one of the crab apples. You could see this species of grass, it's like a Molenbergia, is doing very well here. Just massive, massive clumps of this bunch grass, kind of dominating the, ha the habitat of this little canyon down here. Oh, we got a nice thistle up there. That is a fucking pine. Okay, Pinus ayacahuite. Look at it. Look at those luscious bricks. That's an old cone. Falling off that big bastard right there. One of the uh, the white pines, the five needle pines. Got a, uh, seems to be a native geranium over here. Look at that, oh look at this, look at it. Five lobes on that stigma. They're protandrous, so it looks like the stamens have already fallen off. And uh, there's those very distinct fruits. See the pet, these are old, uh, the flowers already gone, petals already fell off. Stigma's still on there, that five lobe stigma. And uh, there's those sepals. Quite a, quite a few cool native geraniums uh, in North America, but most of the diversity, from what I know, is in the Mediterranean in South Africa. There's that uh, fucking little sperm them again. Look at these goddamn monster thistles. Look at that. Quite a few Circeum species up here. All right. Circeum is the genus here. Just basically uh, artichokes, all right? Close relatives of artichokes, both are in Asteraceae. Look at those long styles. And then all the filers are just spiny as hell. But these, you know, these uh, thistles are six feet tall. And they're growing basically in a cloud forest at uh, 12,000 feet. We're stuck by these bunch grasses here. See, we're, it's kind of, I don't know how we could get through with that name. It's like a fucking, what, are, how, is it just old mounds of soil? How old is, how old are some of these grasses? That's technically six feet tall. Look at that, look at those moths going at the thistle. Look at that, I wonder if they're endemic to this uh, volcano. Probably probably endemic to many high elevation volcanoes. Got a nice fart in the background there. Probably endemic to many, uh, that was not me by the way, but, but I'm gonna keep it in there because I like it and I believe in authenticity. Probably growing at the, you know, just the high elevation, quite a, the, quite a few of the uh, high elevation volcanoes around Mexico. Look at it, they're just they're really going at it. Moths are underappreciated, you fuck. All right, I used to underappreciate them too until I realized how many plants are moth pollinated. Oh, there they go. Okay, in this high elevation pine savannah, we got a nice uh, parasite, a species of Archithobium. Look at it. This case is the family. Look at it, just, look, just popping out of the, the bark right there. Looking kind of gross, kind of like some coral. All right, it's doing a little bit of photosynthesis on its own, but it's stealing a lot from this pine, which is just barely still alive. Another another goddamn grass. What species is this? See, it's got these kind of folded leaves, distinct, distinct leaves. Is it another species of Mullenbergia? Who knows, it's different from the one that we were walking through that we were neck high in. It just forms these bunch grasses. It reminds me what I saw at the high elevation forest of the Dominican Republic. Same thing, pines and then grasslands. But they didn't have these nice penstemons or the senecio, the shrubby senecio. See this. So what? What is this? We got a mycena, and they're growing out of this burnt stalk of uh, this burnt clump of Mullenbergia. If that is indeed what this grass is. Okay, and then uh, stopped here on the side of the road. We got a, a species of thistle, another species of Circeum, and I think it's safe to say that this is a bird pollinated. It's hummingbird pollinated. Look at that. Massive. Just a giant fucking artichoke of a capitulum. And then you got those uh, 
pink styles poking out. Look at it. You got a pink styles poking out waiting to get hit by some damn hummingbird going in there for nectar. All right, quite a few thistles are hummingbird pollinated. All right, that cobweb thistle that grows in California, Circe moxidentalis, is a great example of that. Look at it, just one single flower. I wonder what the seeds look like. They probably got that little plumosa, a uh, little piece of pappus attached to them, you know, for the wind dispersal with the shit. Doesn't get that, doesn't get that tall, but that flower is fucking massive. And again, we just got successive layers of ash flows and eruptions. Ash falls. Look at this massive loop and tool. Look at it. Look at this massive bastard here at 12,000 feet. Okay? Look at it. Look. Many leaved. Okay? But still palmate. Almost looking like a little palm. There's the fruits right there. Little fuzzy beans. www.touchmyfuzzybean.com. There's the flowers not going off yet. Look at that, just massive though. Seeing these, they can get upwards again, six to eight feet tall. Probably Lupinus Montanus. Look into my Circeum Ehrenbergii. Look at that. What a goddamn, oh. Still can't get over, look at it. Oh, that's nice, oh yeah, that's horrible. Okay, now we're at 11,000 feet, only mildly hypoxic. And here we seem to have a hummingbird pollinated Senecio, looks like Senecio colossus. Okay, Unisiriate phyleries, and uh, that little pink color, of course, they get the hummers in there and get them pollinating that. See, there you go. Senecio, of course, Senecio, of course, is a huge genus all over the world. Got quite a few members of that tribe in South Africa, Chile, uh, Australia as well. Oh, it kind of looks like shit right now. You can just barely see those styles poking out. Kind of nice basal rosetta leaves. Bangers when they are going off to look at it. They get the birds in there and pollinating them. Most Senecios tend to bore me, and a lot of them can be pretty weedy, but this is this is kind of a banger. Senecio colossus. Senecio roseus has a bigger flower heads. It's a true banger. Just coming up in the uh, Pinus harwegii forest. Look at it. So remember, you get the higher elevations, insects are going to, it's a little bit colder, insects are cold-blooded, they're going to have a little bit harder of a time waking up in the morning, but not so with the hummingbirds. So hummingbird pollination is something you get a lot of plants uh, evolving, unrelated plants evolving independently, all right? Like this other member, this other member of the Eupatoriae. See that? You got a stevia doing the same thing. See that? With the rosy color. Anytime you're going to see a pink or a rose-colored uh, uh, flower, not always, but especially if it's tubular and especially it's, if it's at higher elevation, it's going to point to bird pollination. And if you're on the west side of the Atlantic Ocean, it's going to point specifically to hummingbird pollination. Hummingbirds do a lot of pollination here. You get it fuzzy because we are high up. Provide some insulation against the extra UV as well as the cold. And then you get those styles poking out. Look at that. Same tribe as Stevia to sweetener. Stevia is a, is a large genus, actually. Quite a few species in it. Look at it. So no ligules. But the goddamn corolla lobes of each individual floret are just that big. You get those long ass Eupatoria, Eupatorium tribe styles poking out. Okay, so this seems like a good spot to end it for today. As you can see, we just got, uh, I don't know, maybe half a mile of grassland, and then you hit the tree line, probably more of that Pinus harwegii, and then uh, you can see way up there, there is nothing growing. It is, uh, it's, you got snow, it's, it's basically alpine. I think uh, we're at 12,000 feet right now, so that's got to be upwards of 16,000, maybe 15,000, maybe higher. I don't know, but uh, I, I am feeling kind of short of breath right now. Look, you still got on the ground, you got that oryngium, that really weird carrot, and you got that, uh, that castellea, that paintbrush, that dwarf paintbrush. I don't know how to keep it clear like that. They got a mole. What are they doing? Just uh, epic grasslands. Quite a few different species of bunch grasses over there. And then, oh, look, they got a little tower up there, too. Anyway, <clears throat> that's Popo Catepetl, active volcano. That's all I got for you this evening. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Oh, look at that cute little, uh, look at that cute little lupin. Quite a few lupins we've been seeing. Anyways, I was saying, have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.